Jamon here. Good morning, everybody, and I hope you're having a great day. I am going to address something that is very touchy, especially you know, here, well, anywhere in America, and that's one of religion and especially Christianity. To give you a little backfiller, I was born and raised Christian. I've gone to a number of Christian schools, Lutheran, uh, Methodists, Catholic. Well, I didn't really go to Catholic schools, but I've been in a Catholic church. Um, seen, you know, Mormons, I, you know, depends on how you want to interpret the Bible. People have their own interpretations, but I've been to a lot of these things and I have seen them. And for a while I was actually a nav, which is a, kind of like a disciple, modern day disciple. And part of the challenge there is to read the Bible from front to back. And as I did it, and even from a long, you know, a long, long time ago, when I was a kid going to these little schools, I just, it doesn't sit right with me. There's a lot of things that don't make sense. Well, we don't understand God's way. Yeah, we do. Yeah, you do. So without further ado, Here's my trusty old Bible. Older the better. The newer ones, they've changed the language to hide things. Here's the old Bible. Here's Jesus, high five. All right. So here are some of my problems with the Bible. And although I do say the Bible is very accurate as a history book, it is not the only way for your soul. Well, you guys know how I think, for those of you who believe in the higher dimensions. But I do believe the Bible was a product of its time. All religions were a product of their time and of their uh, geographic location. So, I'm going to jump into this one right here, my very favorite book, Genesis. And for those of you who want to follow along, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. I'm going to read it for you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. What is heaven? What is earth? Well, we're going to say heaven is it the sky and outer space. Why not? You know, we know it's outer, we know outer space. We're just going to assume that's how heaven is. Earth, we know what earth is. Earth is a little ball. We all live on it. Outer space, if you believe in science, outer space is really, really fucking huge, like massive. Outer space is ridiculously, infinitely long. Okay? I think the furthest object we could see is 13 billion light years away. Well, that's a galaxy from what I've been reading. It's 13 billion light years away. And that's because that's the amount of time it's taken for light to reach us. That's just, and that's why they think that's kind of the dawn of our universe. But 13 billion light years away. And in between us and that 13 billion light years away is a shit ton of galaxies and matter and universes and other planets and other you know, solar systems with stars and stuff like that. God created all of that. Like that, right? Okay. God's got power. I'm not going to leave it there. I've been told, been taught, and I've read, and I'm not going to quote this, but Jesus was sent to earth, God's only begotten son, to save the souls of mankind. Thank you, Jesus. I appreciate that. Here's a problem with that. If Jesus is the son of God, or he is God, reincarnated as a human, or come down to be a human, if God can create the entire universe, but he only sends one human being down to earth to one location to save everybody, he's a dick. <laughs> or he's incompetent, one of the two. Either, you're, you know, either God is extremely incompetent and doesn't care about us, or he's a dick. Because guess what? Humans didn't just live in Israel. They lived over here in America. We call them Indians or Native Americans, depending on how you want to approach it. They lived down in Australia. They lived pretty much in every corner of the world, even Antarctica. They've discovered a lot of stuff in Antarctica, way up north. The fact is, humans have existed everywhere on this planet. Remember, it's this little round ball we live on. Why, if God truly cared about everybody, you know, Jesus came here to save the, you know, all men's souls. He was here for everybody. He's, you know, all you have to do is just believe in Him. High five. Just believe in Him. Jesus is a product of his time. I think he was an enlightened person. Was he the son of God? I don't think so. There's no way he could be. If God could create everything in the universe, but he could only send one human to one part of the world, either he's a dick or he's incompetent. Because, well, we know because of archaeology. There's a little archaeologist. There's that damn science again. Or paleontologist, depending on how far you want to go back. That there's a pretty decent history to earth, and it doesn't just include the Bible. The Bible is a product of a time, and it was a product of its uh, geographical location. It is truth. There is truth in there. There's a ton of truth. It's a great history book. Things really did come out of the sky. 
it's just not the Bible that says that. A lot of religions talk about other things coming out of the sky, beings and people, but we call them aliens. We won't get that far right now. Let's jump in the Bible for that. All right. Remember, the Bible's absolute truth it is irrefutable. It is a doctrine and it is given to us as our daily bread. So now we're going to go to one of my favorite chapters. I love this chapter. Chapter 6 of Genesis. God, there's so much information in chapter 6. But for those of you who want to follow along, chapter 6, I'll read it to you. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, that they were fair, and took of them wives as they chose or please, depending on how you want to read it and which version you have. Why do you need a wife? Right? You have to have opposites in order to have existence. Why do the sons of God have physical bodies? I thought Jesus was his only son, right? Why are these other physical bodies coming down? It says coming down. Why are they in physical form? Why are they taking wives? Who are the sons of God? Why do they need women? Hmm. Sounds like an orgy to me. But, hey, if I come out of the sky and people think I'm God and they want to give me their daughters, all right. Great time. All right. Well, let's see what Jesus has to say about that. For that, flip into Mark chapter 12, verse 25. To give you a little background, one of the says is, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother dies and leaves his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Anyway, what they're saying is women are property. Go fuck yourself. And they're also saying that you know, as she dies, she gets passed on. Well, what happened is seven brothers died in this reference point. Seven. And she got passed on. You know, high five to her. She had a good sex life, didn't she? All right. But seven brothers died. And each brother died. She got passed on, passed on, passed on, passed on, passed on. The disciples said, hmm, but if we die and go to heaven and we're truly married, you find your yin and your yang, right? You're opposite. You complete yourself and you go on. Who gets her in heaven? Ah. So here's what Jesus says. He says... In uh, chapter 25, for when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. You don't have sex. There's no sex in heaven, pretty much. That's kind of what's implying. When you die, which is true, your soul's energy, you don't need to reproduce. So who's coming down and reproducing with women? Unless they're taking all of our women from Earth and going to other planets and making new religions. I mean, who knows? But why are the sons of God coming down and having sex with our women? Unless they're not the sons of God. I don't doubt the Bible as a historical document, but as the only way, truth, and the light, it cannot be. Because one, I don't believe that a true God who truly created everything, including all human beings, he knows everything, right? He knows everything. He has to. Why would he set people up for failure? Why would he be a dick? And, you know, if he could create the entire universe, but he can only send one person to one place to save everybody, not everybody knows about him. Most of the world doesn't care about him. The only thing that is universal, though, that is true, math and energy. If you break everything down to the most basics of basics, even if you break God down and the Bible down, it can ultimately only be math and energy. Another thing I have a problem with is this. Most religions, especially out of Judeo-Christianity, are very anti-homophobic. I am not gay. I have a wife. Mm, she's hot as hell too. And I've got two very beautiful daughters. Um, I have nothing wrong with gay people. I love them. Um, I'm very good friends with them. But if your religion is like, well, anti-gay and anti-homophobic and you feel the need to segregate them and point them out, go fuck yourself pretty much. That's how I feel. Well, go fuck your religion anyway. But this is Jamon. Those are the two main things that I really kind of feel, plus a personal one. Uh, with that being said, I will readdress some more stuff later. But until then, have a good day and become the greatest version of yourself. And remember, ultimately, you're just playing a game. Your soul is just here to gain knowledge and experience because it has no beginning and it has no end. If you have a soul and it cannot die, everything that has a beginning must have an end. Now, you can make up a fake beginning. Here I have something that is round. I could say it starts here, and then it comes back here. I made this point, though. It never actually has a physical beginning or a physical ending, right? Most things are like that. Your soul is like that. 
it's just a circle. It's a loop. It's an infinite loop, which really hurts a lot of people's brains. What is an infinite loop, right? Infinity ultimately is everything. And your soul cannot die, so it has to be infinite. This is just a probability, because any possibility that can happen must happen. That is something that CERN and science has backed up. If there's one dimension, there has to be infinite. If you don't believe in science, and you don't believe you have a soul, I can't help you. You know, good luck in life. But if you do believe in science, and you do believe in a soul, I can put things together for you in a way that can help you through life and help you attain your goals. John here, loving everybody. Have a good day.